Here's me, Eric Onward. The next challenge. Turn it on, see what happens. No cold air yet. It's still type of hot air, but it's not cold air. So today we are doing maintenance on the deer. I thought she was a bit warm back when I was at Allen's Dung. And we've got Donal of DMC Auto Electrics flat to the mat here. He was a bit of a panic on there finding me connections for a minute, like. None's ever that handy. Is this your first 7-8, Donal? First 7-8, aye. An awkward one at that, but what do you do? I'm an American spy, they've a lot to answer for. <laughs> So what happens? Describe to me what happens to get your aircon sorted. Well, hopefully, as you were saying, hopefully this here setup here is just low on gas, but you can have some, you know, with, with no gas or a leak or compressor problem, electrical. Sort of can be. So what do you do? What's the first thing you check? We'll check to see if there is pressure on her. If there's pressure on her, it's usually a good sign, but not always. Pressure on it means it's holding its gas. We don't have any leaks. So that's probably our main thing. Then we'll pull her down, take any gas out of it. If it's reusable, she'll reuse it. If not, she'll just inject new gas into the system and regas all up. We'll try and take that bracket off first, maybe, and see for oh, getting in nowhere there. The most of them you had to start and take brackets off and fit them out them, but they're not oh, too bad. Just the one on camera you usually <laughs> you know problems with. No, they're usually fairly straightforward, especially John Deere, but ah it might be too bad. Was well, Aircon the full time gig or is it hobby? No, it's only the customers there this past few years there. Been asking a lot about it and thought about it last year and didn't go heavy with anything and Looked into a bit more this year, done a wee bit more research stuff on it, and, and to be fair, it's done fairly well. Like, you know, it's most of the electrical end of stuff for that, but no, I can't complain to be fair now. I have a lot of good customers and stuff, and got a good bit of work off them, so. So, I think it does is a bit of kit you had to invest in? That's that's the deer, but so. Ah, we've done, we done a brave bit of research and stuff into what to buy and what would be best to buy, and it's the year, but it's. I'm sort of glad I did sort of go with it. You know, it's. It does most of uh, most of the setup itself, and it's relatively straightforward to use, so it's not too bad. So what's that, Chad? It's the oil for your aircon system. You know, your whole system will run the compressor and that runs with an oil. It's basically a form of hydraulic oil, but it's. So just like a, a lubricant for the pump. Ah, it is, yeah. Every sort of system needs it, you know, so just sort of helps everything run well. And you have gas and you have pressure in your system anyway, so it's a good start. I've had my first days drawn on her. She's pleasing me. But Hydraulic filters need change. She's throwing the hydraulic filter right at me. Uh, she's actually running a wee bit low in the bag end oil. I'm sure that's not helping things. So we we'll to get her topped up in her fluids. And we actually damaged the oil filter in the engine when we were out trying to, uh, you can see it there, we dinge that. So the day we entered her, we did investigate as to how you would get that screwed out. And there's a, there's a plate here on the side of the fuel pump with seven or eight bolts on it and couldn't get the last bolt, couldn't get the fuel filter off without damaging it. What have you broke? Your belt. I broke my good belt. I think the leather bit's working but the buckle hasn't. Couldn't get a replacement filter and we didn't want to decommission the tractor where she sat so filter stayed on her, couldn't get it loosened so that's going to get changed. Uh, 
along with the hydraulic filter just for precautions because it's not good to damage your filter some ways put them on too tight uh, finger tight is enough well how we get on now we're doing it clean Every four or five machines, well, depends if there's me a machine me with bad or a lot of water or damp and moisture in the system, she'll do a clean before she'll do their next machine, just to make sure everything's out. But so was I just like flush a lot of gas through the system or what? I just clean cleans herself out before she'll touch another machine in case there is moisture in the lines or moisture in the system or anything any bad substances as such, but nothing exciting in these gauges? Nothing much at the minute. Nothing, only really telling you what's in each each of your lines, you know, on your aircon system, your, at your high pressure line, your low pressure, but nothing at the minute. Is there, am I right in thinking there's two types of gas now? It used to be... No, nah, there's, there's, you have your 134A, which is mainly 99.9%, not, if not 100%, your all sort of agri plant machinery and cars up to maybe 2013-14, well there is a few exceptions in between but then they moved on to one, one, two, three, four yf which is a newer gas but this machine does both lucky enough but we have only done I think maybe five or six jobs with a one, two, three, four compared to one, three, four where you've maybe done a hundred so far like no problem. So what do you do in a scenario where like say you landed and she's pressure testing and she's leaking you just say right I'll be back whenever you have that fixed that machine there will do a vacuum test you can go to a machine there's no pressure in but it could be from anything it could have been especially tractors and that there you know it's maybe been split before to be worked on just somebody's let the gas out or it's got a new air part or something in between times she'll do a vacuum test and then the machine will basically hold the vacuum to make sure it's not losing the vacuum. If it loses the vacuum, she'll let me know. What we'll do is we'll put in no gas, but a lot of UV dye. Basically, the UV dye is UV, and when it comes out through your hole, or it can be, it can be anything. Be a hole in the pipe it can be a condenser leak, and it can be, it can be anything. But you'll see the UV dye coming out, so it's not too bad. Yes, I've noticed too. You know more so the machines. John Deere's and that'll be common for like a pipe down one side of the engine. There's a, your 20 and 30 series has a filter dryer and at the back right wheel is common them. You sort of get to know the common problems in the machines, you know, over time. It's not too bad. Is that what, what she's pulling out, what gas is in the machine at the minute. It'll vary until it's completed. What's your LED bacon system for? This here? Uh-huh. That's just sort of what fee is, what stage she's on. That's her in the recovery stage, the money that's it's detecting if there's any gas in the system and if there is, it's taking it out. If the gas is good, reusable, she'll inject it back in and just put in whatever's necessary to top it up as such. Well you're an electrics man. That's right. I have a I tell you, this will be a debate for you now if you've ever seen this, right? So in that is a viscous fan that we replaced and the original one had a, a sensor, sensor on it, there's yeah. a cable attaches to it and yep. because we put the new one in without the, 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 the sensor on it, the, the warning lights come up on the dash, obviously she can't tell that the viscous drive is there. Yes. Now, she was heating before we changed it. She couldn't tell that she was heating. She couldn't tell the fan wasn't going fast enough. Yep. So I think it's just an on-off type of sensor. Mm-hmm. Tonight we're on a little quiet mission uh, to have a hook in our fuse box because apparently these things have a diagnostic mode. Remove the spare 10 amp fuse. I see it, I see the gap for it. On first inspection, this slot is empty, this little long one here. And it says below it, diagnostics only. So, what's up here? That's just a magnet for the catch. They've implied there's a spare 10 amp fuse. Hmm. Confused. Oh, I keep reading the sentence. 10 amp fuse from its location at F9 and install it in the diagnostic location F10. 
So F9 is right next door to F10. <laughs> I'm a clown. I am an absolute clown. <laughs> what do you see what it says? Right beside the diagnostic only, it says spare tan up. <laughs> yes, yes. That is successfully inserted into my diagnostic port. Now, I shall continue to read my instructions. So we have no flashing warning light <laughs> whenever we're in diagnostic mode, which is a start. CCU, HCU, ECU, the warning light's back, flash to select, 00, 1, 20, 26, 39, 01. That's not doing me a lot of good. I think that's tonight's mechanic and adjourned. <laughs> how would we figure out how to fill the tractor? We just need to like simulate the that the the, the, the viscous the fans there. Yes. Probably, um, I haven't. I don't know a lot. I haven't looked into a lot. You might get away with like a a load resistor. It's, what we would use if you change a bulb tail light to LED, your warning light won't come on your dash till you, there's a tiller light working because it doesn't take enough power. Yes. We put in as a load resistor along with your LED. Load resistor acts as the load of the bulb. Yes. So what thinks there's a bulb there, you could probably get away with something like that there and that there to eliminate your, your warning light in the dash as such. It's a lot of that stuff can be trial and error, you know, you just have to try and see, but I would say that would get you away, you know. Where would you start looking up? Would you look for schematics for the wiring of that particular limb or what? Well, you could probably just... Or just like, get, the probably get the multimeter out, like... <laughs> Cross wires. You'd probably find you know, the, your wires have to be there for your viscous fan from before. Uh, it's just, it's, it's hanging, it's not uh, connected you, anymore. You, you could, in terms, you could probably just connect your load resistor and them two wires. Load resistor will run a bit warm now, so you just have to be careful where you mount it at. But in theory, you should probably be able to mount it, you know, to them wires. That should eliminate your load in your dash. We'll have to experiment with that. Usually. I need a few vents, some messing or something. Aye. Most of us there. Is you a good bit cold there now? Yes. Proper cold. You'll know about it norm day. That's hurt. Simple as that. Simple as that. You start screwing her back together now. <laughs> I leave my bit to you. <laughs> Playing ball for you now. What's that? Is she playing ball? Not in the slightest. Do you know what's wrong? She's not blue, huh? No? Because you're in New Hall, man. <laughs> She's all topped up. I like Tesla Navarro for me. Hi. Do you think for a hundred pound? <laughs> No pressure on that there anyway, so you probably do have a leak somewhere. Just give her time now to pull a vacuum on it and test it. How's your vac test take? Uh, you'll be 10 minutes for the vacuum and then it does a hold for about 3-4 minutes. If it loses the vacuum over them 4 minutes, you have a leak somewhere. 
Well, there's a relatively small circuit of pipes. You know, you've got your pump. Pump, uh, condenser, which is your radiator. Uh, must be in behind your undercooler there. Evaporator. And sort of just really your pipes after that there. Couple of pressure sensors on the line as well. It's relatively simple, but... Is there a tank of refrigerant as such? Is there, or is it just a pipe no, work? It just, be, it just be built into your circuit. Everything's different, everything holds a different amount of refrigerant. You have your filter as well in your circuit. A filter dryer as such. And typically, how long does the stuff last in? You know, about leaks? If being used regularly, you have no problem getting five, six years like out of a system, in, in theory anyway, you know. Um, worst probably thing you can do is to not use your aircon for long periods of time. Doesn't circulate the oil around the thing. It can, you know, it can contribute to leaks and all them sorts of things. Even at one at a time it's always best just like turn the system on for even a couple of minutes every other week even. Just get everything circulated and get everything run again, get the oil through everything. So what's the verdict? She passed the vacuum test? Hope for the best. I passed the vacuum test and extended it on a bit longer. So hopefully one other thing it can be is these valves themselves can sometimes weak gas and oil by, but they're both dry and showing good. So hopefully it's just a one-off glitch. Yep, nice cold there. Been blowing cold to me. No, everything seems all right there. Doesn't seem to be any leaks. So it could be something simple that's just leaked back out of that. I can't, the valve inside, the fitting inside, sometimes I've seen it. Sometimes it can just be tightened, but both of your fitting seem fine. So, oh. nice van, nice van. Aircon sorted once again in the Navara. Uh, pressure test and nobody, I don't know, is, is dying at this time. So we we'll keep a eye as she starts to get weak again as to where it's coming out. And the big lady is blowing ice cold. So I have a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs>